We give you all the glory. We say thank you. What eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, are the things you have ordained to come to pass for us this month. Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. If you are saying amen, say better amen. It is my new dawn era. What eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard shall be the order of the day in my life. Congratulations. Put your hands together for the Lord and please be seated. Praise God. In our teaching series for all the midweek this month, our focus is on understanding how God guides, how God leads. Just from the prophetic focus that has been read to us now, every child of God has a glorious destiny. Your destiny is too glorious for you to end up in shame. Your destiny is too glorious for you to settle for disgrace. Your destiny is too glorious for you to end up as a destitute. Every child of God has an enviable destiny, not a pitiable destiny. So you are not an object of pity, you are an object of envy. You are created to be envied. Not when they look at you, they say, oh, sorry, yeah. oh, take heart, oh, it shall be where. Tell your neighbor, God forbid. You have a royal destiny. People of royalty, there is a place where they are found. If you have a royalty in your destiny, then you should be thinking of royalty. You should be thinking of ending up in a royal place. Every child of God also has a prosperous destiny. And every child of God has a mountain top destiny. Now with all what God has in store for you, glory, envy, royalty, prosperous destiny, and a mountain top destiny, without divine direction, you may never amount to it. If you are not guided, I want to let you know, you will not smell this thing that is being declared for you. That's why only people that are divinely guided are permitted to see distinction in life. Wherever you want to be now, somebody has already reached there. And that is why you need to be guided because you have not been there before. And knowing fully well that you have been prepared for glory, for royalty, Satan has traps. Satan has manipulative devices. And that's why many are still falling into it. And many will still fall. Why? Scripture says it is not a man to guide himself, to direct himself. You don't have what it takes to lead yourself to your, to your glorious throne. It is not a man to direct himself, to guide himself. So divine direction is the greatest need of every one child of God. No one here can outgrow direction, including me talking to you. No one can outgrow divine guidance. So the more we are guided, the more we are entering into glory, into honor. I discovered more recently that divine guidance is a product of wisdom. Direction is a product of wisdom. No wonder scripture says wisdom is profitable to direct. Foolish people never need guidance. Anything goes. Anything is welcome. Anything is accepted. Why? They are foolish. There is a way that cement right. To the foolish man, everything seemed right. But someone that has an enviable destiny needs to be guided. Hear me? How many times do you need to make mistakes for you to enter where God has in mind for you? How many? How many? How many errors do you want to enter? How many errors? Before you reach where God has in mind for you. 
That's why the great plan God has for us, we need guidance. Tell your neighbor, I need guidance. Daily. Weekly. Consistently. Regularly. We need divine guidance. And the more guided you are, the more glorious your life becomes. Check people who are making it in this kingdom. Someone is guiding them. Because who guides you will determine where you will end. Because you are a reflection of who is counseling you and who is guiding you. Your guide is your counselor. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Who guides you is a pointer to where you will end. You end up becoming like who is guiding you. That's why guidance is costly. And not everybody will want to seek for it. Some will want to try it their own way. You are at liberty. If God knew we never needed it, he wouldn't have put it in place. It is not a man to guide himself, to lead himself. So there is need for God's guidance. If not, the glorious destiny, the things that have been written, eyes have not seen, may never come to pass. Any man you see that is in the wrong place now, somebody led him to the wrong place. Any man, any woman you see now in the wrong direction, somebody took him there. He didn't just go there. Somebody took him there. And if you must enter your right place, your appointed place, your glorious place, your prosperous place, David called it my worthy place, somebody must guide you. You need to be guided. If you despise direction, you will end up as a non-entity. But if you embrace direction, you will end up as a some entity. We read the other day, Psalm 1 and verse 1. Studio, please put that scripture back. Psalm 1 and verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. An ungodly man does not have the spirit of God. An ungodly man does not know the voice of God. Blessed is the man that walketh not. So if you walk in the counsel of the ungodly, your destiny will be heading the wrong way. Your destiny will be misguided, misdirected. And when your destiny is misguided and misdirected, the truth is that you may never arrive at your right place. Nor stand in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. So where you sit also matters. Where you sit matters. Where you see it matters. Now, even naturally, when they see you sitting with wrong people, they know trouble is calling for you. Am I saying the truth? Where you see it matters. You can't be sitting with the wrong people. Obviously, you will embrace their counsel one day. Am I saying the truth? One thing you must understand about guidance today, whoever you are listening to, you will end up being murdered like them. Your counselor is your mother. Your guide is your mother. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Your guide is your mother. Who counsels you? You behave like the person. You talk like the person. You act like the person. You behave like the person. 
you talk like the person, you act like the person, you even reason like the person. He that walketh with the wise shall be what? A companion of fools shall be what? So it's possible to know where somebody is heading to. It's very simple. It's possible to know where someone is heading to. It's possible to know it. But if you know how precious your destiny is, you will seek the right way. You will seek the right way. And the right way is to be guided by God. Now hear me. There are two ways God guides us. One is by the Holy Spirit. And two is to keep right counselors for us. In every phase of our life, from one level of success to another, God brings us guides. Godly counselors which we now call mentors. I might say something to somebody. One of my very close friends in Asaba, he just recently start, started his ministry, and I never knew this young man took the simple cancer that was given to him one day he entered my office. I said, if truly you want to go and do this thing, don't go the way others go. Look for mentors. Look for people that have results. Look for people that know where they are going. So that your journey will not be long. So that you will not enter endurance trek. So that you will not enter a ministry of suffer head. Little did I know this young man <laughs> started towing that path. Before you know what's happening, he connected himself to one of my mentors. That one connected into another one. That one connected into another one. He's not up to five years in ministry, but Matthew Ashimolewa has preached there. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Um, what's his name? Ibiomi has preached there. Who again? Mesa Otabel has preached there. Hear me. If you surround yourself with wrong people, you will, end, you will have wrong experience. Check it. Your experiences in life is tied to the kind of people you surround yourself with. Someone that just started ministry in less than five years is already running three services. I've discovered when you company with the right people, success is cheaply attracted. But when you company with the wrong people, failure is cheaply attracted. It's not a coincidence. It's a choice. The truth is, if you have discovered this plan, if you have discovered how glorious this plan is for you, you will look for the right people to guide you. The reason why many have not, many have not, the reason why many have not, is because they have not discovered how glorious this plan is. You can't picture glory and be hanging around with people of shame. You can't picture glory and be hanging around with people that are not contributing to your advancement. When God guides you, <laughs> he sends help guides. Please take note of that word, help guides. Human help guides. There are help guides that God will plant around your life that will be fashioning you, sharpening you in vision, sharpening you in thinking, sharpening you in success. Sharpening you in breakthrough in every area of your life. I remember one of the remarkable statements Dr. Polenetje made recently. He said, We can take giant steps, 
because we have learned from you what it means to take giant steps. Do you know why? You end up becoming like who you are following. You end up becoming like who you are listening to. So divine guidance is the principal factor needed in the life of every believer that will amount to anything great in this kingdom. Don't forget there is greatness in your kingdom, in your life. You are a kingdom. Oh, you don't know? You are a kingdom. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. So, if that kingdom will emerge, you need a guide with proofs, with results. You need a guide that can lead you through, that can show you what step to take and what step not to take. Don't forget, in the journey of life, there are many pitfalls. There are many traps. There are many potholes. There are many gallops. There are many wolves. But when you have a guide, your guide will show you caution sign. Your guide will show you, at this point, there is brake light. Your guide will tell you at this point, fire speed. People that have guides, they watch every step. Please, I want to let you know, if you will end up as what the prophecy reads, what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, you need this to cancel. The cancel of the Holy Spirit and you need physical cancel. My sheep hear it, my voice. The voice of a stranger, they will not follow. My sheep, hear it my voice. Which voice are you hearing now? That is your guide. Which voice determines your behavior? That's your guide. Which voice determines your attitude? That's your guide. Which voice determines your thinking? That's your guide. It's very easy to know how somebody is behaving. Who is leading him? It's very easy. It's very easy to know how somebody is thinking. Someone is leading him. Scripture said they took note of them that they had been with Jesus. Jesus was not there, but they took note of them. That is who. You know who you are with, they will take note. Am I saying the truth? They will take note in the sense that they will see your manifestations. They will see your behavior. But every time God is leading you, there are obvious signs which we are going to see now. One of the obvious signs is that you will enjoy goodness and mercies when God leads you. When God surrounds you with the right guides, goodness, anywhere you go, goodness follow you. Anywhere you go, mercies follow you. Goodness and mercies. Do you know why? Where you are going, a presence is following. There is a presence that goes with you everywhere you go. It's a goodness. You know the meaning of goodness? The blessings of God. The favor of God. The progress. The success. is a sign of the goodness of God all around you. The message of God. When mercy is at work, victory will be in place. When mercy is at work, you will not struggle. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will show compassion on whom I will show compassion. The race is not to the sweet, neither the battle to the strong. Nor your favor to men of is a time and chance happened to them all. Oh, it's not of him that will it, not of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. 
So when you are guided, when you are guided, it will be obvious. It will be evident. It will be a visible reality in and around your life. Now, what are the requirements for divine guidance? Number one, you must be born again. He that is born of the flesh is of the flesh. And he that is born of the spirit is of the spirit. You must be born again. If a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and all things have become new. But it's amazing that you can be born again and not be in touch with the spirit. That's why someone that is evil can still be canceling you. Giving you instruction, manipulating you. is a sign that you're born again is not correct. My sheep hear it, my voice. The voice of a stranger, they will not follow. How can someone that is not born of the spirit, that does not know the way of God, is not giving you counsel, giving you direction, giving you instruction, where will you end? Where will you end? The moment you are born again, you are not born of the flesh, you are born of the spirit. There is what we call spiritual circumcision. Your spirit man is being circumcised to know and to hear the voice of God. That's why we have what we call the inner witness. That's why we have what we call the conscience, which is the voice of the, the, voice of the spirit. You know when someone is canceling you wrongly. You know when someone is leading you wrongly. And if you tore that line, it's a sign that your own spirit man is dead. Someone is giving you a wrong counsel and you are still, you are still setting your ear to listen. You are no longer born again. You are born against. And you know what? If your spirit man is sensitive, if someone is giving you a wrong spirit, wait a minute, what are you talking about? The person will never call you again. Am I saying the truth? Never. I remember an incident that happened one time. A pastor came and was giving me, trying to give me some cancer. I didn't wait for him to complete his sentence. I said, please, pack up. Quick! He's my senior in this ministry. Will you stop that? If you repeat it again, I blow it up for you. He said, I'm just uh, showing you something. I said, go and show it to devils like you. Till today, if you see me come this way, he pass another way. I don't know where he got that spirit from, but uh, I'm sure somebody... Now, any spirit anybody is operating, someone planted it for him. Am I saying the truth? Any spirit, any person is operating, someone has induced him to it. But don't forget this. My sheep hear it, my voice. The voice of a stranger. They will not do what? Number two requirements for you to be guided... You need to be spiritual. Not to be carnal. Paul said, to be carnally minded is death. You are dying gradually. You know, when the spirit of God left Adam, it was still physical. But the spirit of God has left him. To be carnally minded is death. You are dying. You are going. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Which means, to be spiritual means you live in a consciousness of spirituality. You live in a consciousness. Spirituality is a consciousness. You are a God, it's a consciousness. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You are a God, you must live in the consciousness of that status of a God. I'm not a human being, I'm a God. 
So being spiritual brings you into a consciousness of spirituality. That you are born of the Spirit. So there are some things you cannot tolerate. There are things you cannot welcome. There are things you must not permit. Because if you permit it, another thing will take over you. To be carnally minded. Let's read this scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. Let's read it. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things which are freely given to us of God. Verse 13. Which things also we speak not in the words which men's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with what? The wisdom which the Holy Ghost teacheth. That we might know. So you must know if what anybody is saying to you is spiritual, if it's godly. If it's not godly and you are still listening, you are canal. You know, you can still be doing gingerbread in church and be behave as if you are spiritual. Paul said, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. There are plenty in church. They are in every unit. They are in choir, they are in CCU, they are in technical, everywhere, everywhere. Having a form of godliness, Jim Jim. Spiritual Jim Jim. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The proof of your spirituality, you see wrong and call it wrong. It's not trying to say, okay, like we, we have been in this church. It's not a sign that you are doing well. You can be the one that started this church. People are overtaking you. Paul said, did we start in the spirit or end up in the flesh? He said, God forbid. He said, oh, Galatians, who has bewitched you? You can be in church and bewitched. So, hear me? If you are spiritual, you must keep growing spiritual. Papa said, there is no new age truths. We only have one ancient truth. And you keep learning the truth to improve your life. The day you outgrow the truth, you, you are dead. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be spiritually minded means also minding spiritual things. Because you are spiritual. Now, let me give you an example of minding spiritual things. Where do you find a fish? Where? If a fish does not mind water, where will it end? Death! Okay, let me, let me swim small and go and play small here. This is the water, B. Now, he has jumped out. What will happen to it? Please, say the truth. It can breathe for some minutes. What next will happen? It will just die. The system is not conformable to this environment. The system is only conformable to this environment. When your system is now beginning to be conformed to carnality, you are on your pathway to death. No wonder Paul said in Romans chapter 12. Let's read that scripture. Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do not be conformed. 
To be conformed means to be squeezed into their own mold. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. When you are transformed, you know, you know where transformed people stay. You know where transformed people meet. You also know where deformed people meet. When you work with deformed people, you will soon be deformed. But when you work with transformed people, they help you to stay transformed. That brings to mind again, as iron sharpens iron, so does a man sharpen the countenance of his friend. But a companion of fools shall be what? So you must be spiritual. To stay spiritual, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. To stay spiritual, you must not be void of prayer. E. M. Bound said, a praying man will stop sinning, and a sinning man will stop praying. A praying man will stop sinning. Because every time you are praying, you are consciously and truly praying, the Spirit of God is at work in you. He will show you all your errors, all the things you are not doing right. If truly you are praying, no. What are the benefits of divine guidance? Number one, benefits of divine guidance. God said, he will go before you. So number one benefit, God goes with the lead. The one is leading. Isaiah 45, we'll read from verse 1. Isaiah 45, he will go before you. I will go before you. Thou saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand have I holding, to subdue nations before him, and I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaf gates. And the gates shall not be shut. Look at verse 2. I will go before thee. And make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass. I will cut in sunder the bars of iron. I will go before thee. I will level barriers before you. When you are led by God, he goes before you. He handles your opposition. He handles the gang ups. He handles your manipulation. I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. People that have vowed to set, set obstacles for you, God said, no problem, I will handle them for you. I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. So when God goes before you, you are not afraid of who is in front because he's already in front. And when God goes before you, before you get there, the barriers are cleared. The barriers are cleared. I will go before you. Moses prayed a prayer. If your presence go not with me, carry me not away from this place. And God said, I will go before you. I will go before you. If your presence is not going with me, please, leave me here. Oh. Let me stay here. He said, no. I will go before thee. I will go before thee. Lord, as I'm embarking on this journey, go before me. As I'm coming to Lafia, Lord, go before me. It's a conditional prayer. Lord, go before me. I don't know what the place look like. I don't know the kind of people that we meet there. Go before me. So even if someone is preparing to be an obstacle in 2018, I wish him good luck. If train jam you, it's better than God jam you. Are you understanding what I'm saying now? If train jam you, it's better for you say God no jam you. Because when jam, God jam you, what will happen? Whosoever falleth upon this stone shall be broken in pieces. But whosoever this stone falleth upon shall be what? That is the effect of God going before you. Number two, so can you now see it when God goes ahead of you? <laughs> uh, let's take a look at another classic scripture of when God goes before you. Exodus 23. 
Verse 20. So when God goes before you, there are too many things that will go before you. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee in the, into the place that I have prepared for you. So when God goes ahead of you, angels will be on that ride. So they will clear the way, prepare the place, and bring you into the place. So there's a place prepared. There's a place prepared. So when God goes ahead of you, angels had when you are praying, oh, this one said, okay, let's go and uh, arrange the place. Let's go and prepare the place. So there's a prepared place for you in 2018. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. So that must be a conditional prayer. Even as we are praying and fasting and praying for this month, we are also praying, Lord, go ahead of me. Go ahead of me in March 2018. Go before me. Prepare the place before me. Clear the obstacles. Clear the barriers. Level oppositions. And that's exactly what God will do for you. Because you have given him the go-ahead order. Number two benefit. God goes with the lead. He doesn't only go before you. He goes with you. And the Lord was walking with them. I won't forget the first day I came. <laughs> the first day I came. I didn't just feel like praying. All of a sudden I started singing. I started singing before I know. I was praying and I was sweating. I have not had anything no. He has not told me anything. Lero shiko prekleto zanendre. Leri nero jako zesu le kaleta. Rito la bari jako tezo zaneda. Lembo lodo shiketeli andalada. Towards the end of the prayer, the only thing I heard, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I had to understand it where, as I was with Ben, so will I be with you. <laughs> so I had to look for the scripture. I had to carry my phone. As I was with Moses, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? So when I now saw it. I had to go back to Joshua chapter 1. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. So will I be with you. I had to be searching scripture, be with you. All the scripture that has to be with you, be with you, be with you. If the Lord be for me, if the Lord be for me, you don't enter trouble, oh. If the Lord be for me, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. When God be with you, life will be comfortable for you. When God be with you, he will take away pressure. What others suffer, you will suffer. When God be with you, you will enjoy pleasure. When God be with you, you will enjoy ease. When God be with you, you will not be under tension. And the Lord was walking with them. Please, I tell you, one of the best things that can happen to you is for God to be with you. When God is with you, hear me, you don't need grammar. What you need is confirmation. The Lord was with him. And the Lord was with Joseph. And the Lord favored him. And the Lord was with Joseph. And the Lord was with David. And the Lord was with Samuel. Check all the people the Lord was with. Their life was going from progress to progress. From success to success. From increase to increase. Hear me? If God is with you, if we will not survive around you. I tell you the truth. If God is with you, if we people will not survive around you. I'm telling you the truth. And the Lord will be with you. And the Lord will be with you. This month, you will enjoy the presence of God. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Do you know when God is with you, you attract good. You attract favor. You attract blessing. Do you know who is with you determines what flows to you? Even naturally, when bad people are with you, 
good people run away from you. Am I saying the truth? The moment they know now that you are camping with bad people, good people start running away. Me, if I know you are camping with bad people, I will tell you to your face. You will see it in my action. You will see it in my attitude. I will avoid you. Simple. Because friendship is contagious. You can't contact a wrong spirit and come and hang around me. God forbid, but I will... You know what we follow next. It's very easy to know when someone has contacted a bad spirit. It's very easy. You don't need to be sleeping. I don't need to like a shaka. You will see it around. It's very, it's very easy. You see it. You will quickly know that the spirit of God has left. Because your manifestation and behavior does not show that God is with you. Evil. Evil people are now with you. Please, I beg you, don't drive God away. Don't drive God away. Because that's the security of your destiny. That's the security of your success. If God leaves you now, everything around you will begin to fail. Everything. Everything around you will begin to collapse. The favor you are enjoying, you will no longer enjoy it. The help that was coming before will be taken away when God is not with you. And number three, as we rise up to pray, God goes before you, God goes with you, and God protects you. As they were moving from one nation to another, he suffered no man to do them wrong, saying, touch not my anointed, and do my prophet no harm. Touch not. Apostle Suleiman is always saying this. If you touch me by mistake, you will die by correction. Did you hear what I said? If you touch me by mistake, you will die by what? Because there is a warning for you there. Touch not. Touch not. You are the touch not of the Lord. That's why there is a hedge of safety round about you. When the enemy shall come, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. There is a standard of safety. Even Satan himself confessed. God asked him, have you considered my servant Job? He said, I've seen him, but I can't touch him. He said, why? He said, because you have built a hedge round about him, so I can't touch him. There are people you can't touch. If you touch them, things begin to go wrong in your life. Oh, you don't know? There are people you don't touch. Oh. They are carrying a touch knot. That's why scripture said, <laughs> let no man trouble me. For I bear what? For I bear what? <laughs> let no man trouble me. If you trouble me, if they trouble you, angels will trouble them. <laughs> if they trouble you, they will suffer calamity. Oh, you don't know? So, these are the things you enjoy when you are led. Let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the mark of Christ. And he said, I will recompense them with tribulation, them that trouble you. So, just go ahead and be troubling me. Tribulation is coming for you and your family. It's a baptism. Everyone around you will be suffering the heat. Because you are troubling who you are not supposed to trouble. There are people you just see and avoid. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's just like those uh, five anointed men that were uh, planning to see how they will close down Shiloh. Their church closed. Without announcement. God sent angels and drove everybody out of their church. Their church don't close. Oh. I know everybody did not go to network news. He did not call for fasting and prayer. Please, I want you to know this. You carry a touch knot. Anyone that touch you, 
Fire will touch them. Angels will touch them. And you know, when God touch you, <laughs> now punishment. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Huh? When God say, touch not. It's just like when uh, he told Adam, you see, of everything you, that is here, you are free to eat. But you see the one hanging on this fan, don't touch it. The day you touch it, something will touch you. Did it happen to Adam or not? Please, I beg you, know what you are entitled to by walking in guidance so that you don't leave your place. When you are in the wrong place, the Spirit of God won't follow you there. Now, when Samson went to the Philistine women, did the Spirit of God follow him there? No, he didn't follow him. He didn't follow him. He didn't follow him. That's why he couldn't hear the voice of God. He was in the wrong place. When you are in the wrong place, the Holy Ghost does not follow you there. When you are with the wrong people, the Holy Ghost is not with you there. That's why you determine and you decide where you be part time, who you be with part time. Rise up to your feet. We are going to pray one prayer and we partake of the communion. Lord, lead me this month. Go before me. Make my path straight. Make the crooked path to be straight. Clear off every obstacle. I cannot lead myself. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord, go before me. Moses prayed, if your presence go not with me. If your presence go not with me. He said, carry me not away from this place. Lord, I need your guidance. I need your guidance. I need your guidance. I don't want to fall into error. I don't want to fall into the trap of the wicked. I need your guidance. I need your guidance. I have failed enough. I have made enough mistake. Lord, I need your guidance. I need your guidance, Spirit of God. I need your guidance. I need your guidance. Lord, go ahead of me. This month of March, go ahead of me. This month of March, go ahead of me. Make the crooked path to be straight. Go ahead of me. Go ahead of me. Break every barrier. Crush every opposition. Go ahead of me this month. Make my path to be path of pleasantness. Make my path to drop fatness. Lord, go ahead of me this month. Make my, make my path to be straight. Take away every form of crookedness. Lord, go ahead of me. Take away every crookedness on my path. Clear every opposition. Level every mountain. Clear every barrier. Spiritual barrier. Physical barrier. Leranto, anze nangli jegozani, liaketo ri sheto paria, rezozeni keto labo shado reto, ingo pleketo ri andekete ri zaza, jeso nabre kleko tesoze, likutari ya kopele kete ziaba, jesu zane brekleko talebre, rekote brekleko tosi zane kata. Lord, go ahead of me. What eyes have not seen. What ears have not heard is only the entitlement of those that you lead. Lord, go ahead of me. Lead me this month to the place where you have prepared treasures, to the place where you have prepared goodness, to the place where you have prepared favor, to the place where you have prepared opportunity. Lead me this month. Go ahead of me. Make the crooked path to be straight. Go ahead of me. 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 Go ahead of me, Lord. Lord, I pray. I place a demand on your presence. Go ahead of me. Go ahead of me in this month of March. Go ahead of me. Make my paths to be straight, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. When God guides, good follow. He says, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Lord, all through this month, let your goodness and your mercy be visible in my life, in my family.
in this assembly. Lord, let your goodness and your mercy. Oh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leadeth me beside the still waters. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord, let your goodness and your mercy, let your goodness and your mercy be visible in my life, in my family, concerning my children, concerning my wife, concerning me, concerning this assembly. Let your goodness and your mercy go with us this month. Go with us this month. Every step we will take, let your goodness and your mercy follow. Every step we will take, let you be, be the step of goodness. Let you be the step of your mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Go ahead of me, Lord. 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 Let this month be marked with your goodness. Let this month be marked with goodness and mercy. Let this month be marked with goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. Shall follow my wife. Shall follow my children. Shall follow everyone you have made me shepherd over in this assembly. Goodness and mercy. 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 Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. The remaining one minute, Lord, every trap the wicked has set for me this month, let it fail. Let the trap of the wicked fail. Disappoint the counsel of the enemy. Frustrate the token of liars. Lord, lift up your voice and pray from the depth of your spirit. Lord, every trap, every trap, every conspiracy, every gang up, every trap the wicked has set for me this month, Lord, let it backfire. Lord, let the trap of the wicked fail. Let the conspiracy of the enemy fail. Let their invocation backfire. I will not be a victim of the wicked. I will not fall into the trap of my enemies. Lerante katona shikete ruza. Jekote preklete. Inropa likato zeso. Jekosezia likatoria. Inda prekleketo. Lift up your voice and pray. Every trap of the wicked targeted against me, against my wife, against my children. Lord, let it fail. Let their trap fail. Let their manipulation fail. Let their conspiracy fail. Let their evil network fail. In Lanado, Shamanga Tosa, Erope Kito Laderiata. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. He said, I am the one that leadeth thee in the way that thou shouldest go and make profit. This month, you will make profit. This month, your steps will be steps of blessing. This month, your steps will be steps of progress. This month, your steps will be steps of success. This month, you will enjoy divine speed. You will not crawl this month. No trap of the wicked will catch you. I decree your exemption from every manipulation. If you are saying amen, say better amen. It shall be well with you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. He said as he gave them communion, their eyes will open. As you partake of this communion, you will be seeing the right things. You will be doing the right things. You will be going the right place. If you are saying amen, say better amen. That will be your testimony. In Jesus' name.